Um, Atik Rahim could not be with us today because he was, um, he still is in Tehran, blocked with the flights, he was in Kazakhstan before, and uh, he doesn't know exactly when he will arrive to Paris to come here, but we hope that he will be here before the weekend. Don't, if that happens, I'll do another projection of the film with the presence of Attic. And, uh, but Yosif Day is here with us. It's really a pleasure to have you here. I'm here, I'm here. And it's, uh, <coughs> uh, she's as well the, the actress of Patterson of Jim Jarmusch, but she could not be here for the other film because he has to, she has to leave tomorrow. And uh, and I think we can speak about the film with you because it's such a strong uh, acting, just a fantastic acting uh, that in a, such a, a film that you know it's a so particular movie and uh, so beautiful and beautiful in terms of uh, not beauty. But it's really about the feelings and uh, how you, you know, a woman can survive in all these, you know, in all these uh, incredible disasters that uh, are around her. And I just wanted you to speak a little bit first about your, how, uh, your relation to the film with Attic. Attic won the Prix Goncourt. He's a great writer. He won the Prix Goncourt that I think you know is one of the most, is the Nobel Prize for French writers with this, uh, with the, the book that he adapted after to the cinema. And uh, he's a, and uh, you can read it. There are three of his books translated in Portuguese <coughs> and you can find them. And, uh, but I'd like you to talk about when you met him, when you knew him, and uh, if you knew his uh, work before, and uh, how you accepted this, this role. First of all, good night. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, it's a great adventure being in Paulus Festival. You cannot imagine. For an actress, is is exceptional. Um, about this movie, when I came from Iran in 2008, um, I was really desperate because I thought I'm, I will never ever work in cinema ever again. And um, maybe a year after or two years after, I couldn't speak French at all at that moment. And I read the book in English. I was waiting for the translation to come out. And I, when I read the book, I was blown away. And I thought, uh, if there is one thing I have to do before dying is to play this woman. And um, we had a friend in common, Jean-Claude Carrière, that uh, he wrote this script with Attic. He adapted the, the book into a screenplay. And uh, first of all, um, Attic didn't want me. Uh, in the movie, he was thinking I may be young or now he has all his excuses. Now if he was here, he would defend himself, but now he's not here. So um, I can defend him <laughs> from myself. Um, but I really had to convince him and uh, maybe it was the first time that I just told him, listen, if you don't take me for this role, I will come to where you're shooting and I will play the part in front of where you're shooting on the street. And I, would, I will just do this. I would just keep playing this part on the streets if you just don't give me this part. I never did this for any other movie, of course. And then, um, thankfully, the third, fourth movie of Asghar Farhadi about Ellie came out. And he saw that movie and he believed that, okay, I can look a bit older or I don't, I'm not so young. And then he accepted. And uh, we said, we're going to do this movie. And we started reading with Jean-Claude. We went to the South. We worked together. And uh, we did it. <laughs> you. <coughs> <laughs> I, 
I think you were right. And um, and uh, from the start, you you shot where we saw, where you shot the movie. We're shooting in Casablanca in, in Morocco. Casablanca in Morocco, and uh, it's a uh, it's such a incredible you know courage for uh, you had already de demonstrate that that you are playing this woman that this looking for freedom in uh, such conditions and things like that. I think you are you know in a kind of a always uh, uh, and you all your career was really made for from this strong you know woman she's not the only one and um, and I think that you know even that the, that should cause some problems for you personally you know <laughs> and um, let's not talk about that but anyway <coughs> I'd like to know um you know uh what is exactly you know the, the, when you you know accept because you really understood what what going on in, on these uh, in a, in this part of the world because you you were close to that and uh, do you think it's really so uh, 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 the film is is close to the reality or is more kind of a, a really fiction and is not close to the reality how the things are now? Uh, well, Atik always used to say that uh, in, like Madame Bovary doesn't represent la f f France. So he was always saying this woman also, he she doesn't represent Afghanistan. It's his world in a way. But of course, in Afghanistan and places like this, the only way women can talk is for men to be silent. Uh, otherwise, women cannot really talk. And as uh, the story of the film, this woman uses this to talk and talk and talk and uh, to become free in a way. But uh, yes, we know that the situation of women in Afghanistan, it's really... If it's not the worst, worst, it's one of the worst situation of women on the planet, what they live and what they have lived. Um, but uh, I think every time I I come for Q&A and I always arrive at the end of the movie and I see the smile and I remember uh, when I was asking Atik, like, why, why, she, why should I... I smile really and he was just telling me just look look at the people and tell them you are n I am not what you think I am I'm something else that you you cannot imagine and I think most of us we can't imagine of what is really happening to all these women and who they really are and the strength there and the, the power they have under all these pressure and repression from the society, from their families, from the governments, from everything. All the women are always weapons of war. Whatever happens is women that are gonna pay the price. Even in France, women with the story of Burkini, they pay the price, like the Daesh attacks, women they pay the price. And you ask yourself why women should be the weapon of war, Why? any problem suddenly something with women come up and we have to put something on women but the result is they are the strongest women in the world the women that i've seen in these regions in egypt in iran in afghanistan in most these places that women they they carry the weight of uh, ignorance of the society and um, that's all I thought is that uh, it's amazing because it has created amazingly strong women in that region. I was wondering, you speaking uh, uh, Afghani, it was not a Farsi from Iran, it was yeah. a Farsi from Afghanistan. And did you train yourself? Yeah. I mean, it's something that... Thank you for mentioning this. I'm always, because uh, I, I forget sometimes, uh, yes, actually, Afghani is a, is is it the same language but uh, same same but different. 
it's a little bit different. Like Persian speaking people, they need sometimes subtitle. It's another another dialect and another accent. Uh, and we worked a lot on it. And I was telling Ati, Ati, listen, this movie is not going to be seen in Afghanistan. Iranians, we don't care. It's going to be Europeans. Just don't, don't push me so hard. And for him, it was like, no, he was very concerned. And um, sometimes he was killing me. Even he dubbed some very little uh, details that I was like, I think you're ruining one beautiful sentence because of an accent thing. But he, it was very important for him uh, for the accent to be uh, just and so they recorded all the dialogues for me and I was listening to them day and night and uh, as you realize Af Afghani, uh, Afghani accent is very much more faster because in Farsi we speak like like Brazilians in, in, in Portuguese like they it's very like meowing like a cat that meow like it's the same it's like obrigada, but here is obrigada. It's very, so Afghanis are very, uh, like the Portuguese of Portuguese. They're very, um, very, they pronounce everything. So it was a, a bit of a job, but I think it's, yeah, it happened. And even the Afghanis, they were happy about it. They couldn't make fun of me, as they mostly do of, of us Iranians. <laughs> Iran, you have worked with many of the best, like many of the great directors in uh, in, in in Iran, like Asghar Farhadi, Darush Merjui. But then, art is about the expressing of yourself, like the soul or some those stuff. In Iran, because of the conditions, like both the uh, the director and the actors or actresses, they cannot express themselves in it because of the limitations. And but here you have the limitation of like in your movie, as you told, the language in Afghani, Afghani or like French, French. So that is the limitations or the challenge in Iran. The challenging part and here is the language, in my opinion. So, but for you, which one were more difficult to <laughs> adopt? Wow, very interesting question. Um, Yes, it's true that in Iran, we are limited about going deeper in the psychology of women, especially women, because we cannot go deep enough because you don't want to go deep. Uh, you can't. It will be uh, censored in a way. And here, of course, yes, I have the language barrier, and I, I was counting. I have acted in seven different languages in the world, languages I don't even speak, and I learned them phonetically, and I act in them but now today I, I was asking myself if one day they come and ask me to speak in Chinese if I, I can I do that and I said okay I, I will try so it's the mostly I think the challenge I like to challenge myself in any possible way and not to accept the conditions like when I was coming when I came to France I wasn't speaking a word of French and um, I cannot stand any any limitation and anyone saying because of this then you can't play this i mean i i'm sure i cannot play a swedish girl or uh, maybe a japanese maybe they can work on it but but the rest i try to do my best to to cherish the part and and yes i think this language thing these days it's going it's le it's getting a little bit difficult because I recently did a movie in India and I was speaking Hindi um, and I learned like I took very intensive courses for six months and I realized the amount of pressure on me because actors, when you look at actors and amazing actors, they're acting, they're acting mostly in their language and they have so many other things to to bring up in terms of acting but when you have the language then the language it becomes the first thing that you're paying attention to and then all the acting emotions whatever psychology it becomes the second and it's a little bit difficult or even for patterson the last day um that we were doing pre-production jim just took me to a room and told me Go shift them. I just ask you one thing, and I was like, "What? What? Why? What is he going to ask me?" He said, "I prefer that you speak with American accent," and I was, I was like, 
really, Jim, do you really want me to do that? But we need to work on it. And so I panicked. I completely panicked and I had to find the coach I worked with in Body of Lies. He was the coach of Leonardo DiCaprio. I contacted him. I said, Tim Monik, I said, Tim, I'm in New York. Do you know anyone I can work with? He said, listen, it's Jim, it's you. I mean, we can work on Skype. So I spent days working with him on Skype on American accent. And I realized had the pressure, uh, the pressure of the difference between like style or style. And this makes a difference or like um, so many details that then you have to you have to do it in a way. But I think it's my destiny. I mean, I'm out of Iran. I don't even consider as an Iranian. I mean, I don't, I act in any possible language except Iranian, Farsi. So I don't know what is this destiny. I cherish it. I love it. I hope Portuguese. It's going to be oh, Portuguese yeah. next. <laughs> With Brazilian accent. <laughs> oh. Uh, I have one question. Uh, you are from Ira Iran, and you have a few millions Afghans living in, in Iran. Uh, did you show, by coincidence, this film also in Iran? And how was the reaction, in case you could show it? I don't know if you were allowed to, put, to show to the Iranians this film. And how was not the reaction? Not at all. Of the, not at all. Mean, no, no chance. Eh? No, no chance. And no, in no. Afghanistan? Yes, actually, they showed it in Afghanistan because Afghanistan has a liberal government, <laughs> more liberal as Iran. But uh, but the thing is, no movies are allowed to be shown in Iran. Uh, but all the movies are there. The the day, even the day before, they are showing it uh, them in United States. The black market, you can buy everything. Um, so yes, this movie. Um, had been seen in Iran and also in Afghanistan and um, it's amazing I remember one of the first um, festivals that the movie went to uh, was uh, Abu Dhabi I think and it was very intense because I was seeing people walking out of the theater with like this traditional golf clothes and me and Atik we were sitting there she says at the end I have become a prophet it's a big thing like things like that are big things and we were very very nervous but and when we went up for the q a it was this silent and everybody was just looking at us and we thought we're dead like we better just dig our grave and die here and suddenly this woman just stood up completely veiled just she said you just talked our word thank you this is our world this is our sufferings and yes, how could you understand us so well? And I think um, not just women in Afghanistan or, or, or Iran, this book has been uh, one of the best sellers in France. So even the women in France, that they are considered to be the most liberated women in the world, they love this book. So they are some hidden corners f in, the, in the being of a any woman that... Uh, needs to be heard and appreciated, I think. Did you bring something to the film or, you know, because Attic is, is a man and the way that he looks at this, you know, this woman and everything, it's, in, it's really incredible, like he, like he understood everything. But did you bring something or the script was exactly what he, he, he came with uh, Jean-Claude Carrière? Well, the script was mostly written as a poetry. It was so, uh, no, we didn't add any word. I was just trying to learn the, the accent. But I think I brought some parts of myself into the character as we always do. But Atik for him was so clear about what he wanted. And Atik has an amazing knowledge of women and I always ask him how, everybody ask him, how do you know women so well? Um, it's also a question for him, I think, that these days he asks himself that why he knows women so well, in a way. And the, uh, we don't know, mo mo uh, you, could you tell me, 
uh, to tell uh, Atik lived long time in Afghanistan or he came very when he was very young to the Occident? Uh, he was living in Afghanistan until the age of in the uh, beginning of his 20s, I think. And then he left, he went to India. He has a, he has a very long journey until he finished um, in France. Um, but I hope that he will come and he will tell you his stories. But uh, he's from a very good family in Afghanistan, a good big family in Afghanistan. And um, he was always having so much love for women, I can say, even f since a very young age. And he ended up in France. It's such a great place to end up, I think, France. And for leaving Portugal, I think it's better. <laughs> um, one, one thing that struck me in the film was none of the characters has a, a name. They are uh, defined by their professional situation, the captain or the, um, anyone that, w uh, or the waterman, or by family ties. But none has a name. Is that for any particular reason? I suppose so. Uh, yes, it is. Um Actually, even in the beginning of the book, it doesn't even mention that we are in Afghanistan. Uh, it said somewhere, sometime. Uh, doesn't really matter that where we are or what time it is. Or, and it's true that nobody has a name. It's for it's um, um, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it, he has think of it, and in the in the book, it's also nobody has name or. I think it's also maybe a way to say this can happen anywhere in the world and uh, there is no nationality even in the book. It never meant, they never mention Afghanistan. Now in the movie we see that we are in Afghanistan but it's never mentioned because it, it can be uh, in so many other places. Any more questions? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> we'll see it in. Uh, we'll see you in the next. Uh, you know, uh, after tomorrow, I think. Yeah, Patterson, think Patterson. of me. And uh, and uh, and very soon in other films, I think. Yes, and I hope the next festival. Yeah. I'm so. I have to tell you. I I have been to so many festivals, but this one for actors is the most exceptional you cannot imagine. It is incredible, and I have to thank Paolo Branco to bring me here to just uh, feel this amount of joy to be for being here, and also for Portugal and for Lisbon, especially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.